Hey. Definition of beauty. Our God, we praise you and we honor you because you are God. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, I ask that you would be with me throughout this video, oh God, and let everything that I say, oh God, be pleasing to you, oh God, and pleasing in your sight. And God, if there's anything that I say, oh God, that would help somebody, oh God, that is my prayer and my heart's desire, oh God. I bless you, I honor you, and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany Anise. If you're an old subscriber, welcome back. I'm so excited to be bringing this video to you guys, but before we get into this video i'm gonna need you guys to do one thing and that's to subscribe to my channel click the bell notification so you're notified each time i post a new video and make sure you like this video as you guys can tell by the title this is a testimony tuesday video when i first created my channel i wanted it to be like you know about hair and makeup and all this kind of stuff but i was really trying to conform to be somebody who i'm not after that, like when I took my sabbatical, which was like two years or something like that, I don't remember. But God told me that if I'm going to have this platform, I need to make sure that I keep him at the forefront. So that is why I pray in the beginning of all of my videos. That is why there's a scripture in all of my videos because without him, where would I be? This is all off the dome. This is all prophetic. So... <laughs> whatever i say you know there's no notes there's nothing it's just me the light and you so i hope you guys like it and stay tuned so ever since i was a little girl i've been in church my whole life i've never been the i didn't go to church person i've always been in church my whole life uh i fit the cliche of i had a praying grandmother but i really did have a praying grandmother when i was nine maybe eight or something like that i vividly remember going to the front of my church and saying i want to be baptized not really knowing what that meant but i just thought that's what i was supposed to say so that's what i did and like i said throughout my whole life i've been in church like all the time the only period of my life where i did not go to church was when i was in college and i didn't go to church because i didn't have a car i felt like i didn't like the church like it was just a lot and i felt like Ain't no church like my church, you know? So, I didn't go to church when I was in college. Before I transitioned to college, I lived at home with my aunt, my grandma, like we all lived together. I would say that they were very strict. Like my nanny, she didn't play, okay? You didn't have a boyfriend, you didn't stay out late, you didn't go to parties, none of that. So I didn't do any of that stuff in high school. None of that happened for me until I got to college. And when I got to college, I think because I didn't have that freedom beforehand, it really like did some damage. So I was doing what I thought was cool, doing what I thought, you know, would help me fit in, um, doing what I thought people wanted from me, uh, falling into peer pressure and just doing what everybody else was doing, knowing like that's not, that's not me. But anyway, I did it, you know, I did the partying, I did the drinking, I did the smoking, I did the, the fornicating, I did all of that, all of it in college, right? I graduated December 2015, that January I came home, and that's when like life started spiraling in a bad way and nobody knew about it. I started going out partying heavy, when I say heavy, I mean heavy going out partying being with all kind of men all times of the day times of the night not telling my nanny where i was going so i just want y'all to know my nanny don't know any of this so she's finding out <laughs> she's finding out the same time y'all are but to god be the glory i'm grown now and god is forgiving me so hopefully she can too but yeah just doing stuff that i had no business doing is basically how i lived my life from 2015 until 2016 that entire time span i just was stuck but i wasn't dumb stuck right so i was stuck to the point where i would go out saturday party stay out till 2 30 in the morning and then sunday i was at church in the choir stand on the microphone singing praise and worship still drunk it got to a point where i was like if i know that god is gonna forgive me what's the point of me 
having to repent. What's the point of me saying sorry? Like, I already know he's gonna forgive me. Like, he ain't gonna judge me for this because I sing on a praise team and I go to Bible study and I'm so involved and I love Jesus. So he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna do nothing. Like, I'm not gonna feel his judgment because he loves me so much, right? Wrong, okay? Wrong. That's the wrong way of thinking. Do not think like that. In December of 2016, I met my husband. After I met my husband, everybody told me that I fell off the map because I met my husband. But really, looking at it like now, I realized that I fell off the map because God was pruning me. And I didn't know it until everything started to unfold. So I met my husband December 2016, and I had been going to the same church all my life. When I say all my life, I mean all my life. I've been going to the same church. And this church has helped me a lot. It helped me grow. It helped me know about faith. If there ain't nothing else I know, I know about faith, okay? This church helped me know about faith. Like, this church, this church really instilled, like, the foundational work of my life. But I always used to say, there just has to be more to God. This cannot be it. There has to be more to God. And so I found myself going on a journey of wanting to know more about God and wanting to see like how much more, I'll call them like an onion. Like there's so many layers. Like how many more layers are there to God? So when I met my husband, he was already involved in ministry. Like he playing, preaching, all of this stuff in all of these churches. And so by nature, I just wanted to be with him because I liked him and he was cute. So I would go with him to all of these churches. This church we went to was the church that I currently go to. But at first glance, this church was spooky. This church was crazy. These people were too nice. Like you ever meet people and you're like, bro, you too nice. Like what's the catch? Like, <laughs> what do you want from me? Like, y'all are too nice. At this new church, which is the church that I go to now, he would go and play. And this was only supposed to be a temporary gig. So he would go and play. I would go sit in the back of church and just chill. Because at the time, I was still going to my home church, the church I had been to all my life. So I just sit in the back and chill. This church is a deliverance, prophetic, apostolic church all of this was new to me so people at the front they be purging apostle is speaking in tongues and i'm like this too much like who told me to come here eventually i started to get intrigued it was like i wonder what's gonna happen next time and so it started becoming where it wasn't a gig and it was like i want to go like my apostle will tell you like i started off at the back of the church and eventually I just started making my way to the front of the church. What I didn't know was that God was not only bringing me closer to like the altar, but he was bringing me closer to him. Life goes on and I keep moving closer and closer to the front of the church. Now, like I said, it's an apostolic prophetic deliverance church. So this church was my second encounter with the prophetic. The first time I experienced the prophetic, it was fake. And I ain't, I ain't scared to say it, it was fake, okay? It was just fake and wrong. And so I had this bad interpretation and this bad mindset about the prophetic because I was like, bro, like all this hocus pocus, like, no, we can watch this on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. We ain't got to come to church for that. But at this new church, it was real. And I, I wasn't used to that. So the apostle, he would, he would greet me and he would call me prophetess. And I'm like, I'm Tiffany. Like, I'm still the girl that's going out. Like. I'm not that per like I'm not prophetess. But he saw in me what God saw in me and I didn't even know it. I distinctly remember <laughs> my husband and I going to Prospect Park. That's a little bar lounge situation here. And he's when we were there, we were celebrating a friend's birthday. And they had hookah. And I was smoking the hookah because I wanted to smoke hookah. <laughs> and he asked me, he was like, so are you planning to be the pastor's wife and smoking hookah? Like, are you going to smoke hookah with the members? And I was like, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with it. Like, <laughs> it's just hookah. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not doing anything else. I was just also the same person. I was like, it ain't nothing wrong with me having a little drink. Like, there's nothing wrong with this. Like, I can do it. But God was still pruning me to be who he wanted me to be. Fast forward a little bit to maybe last year christmas time or a little bit before that that's when i truly got serious with god and was like 
I don't want to be double-minded. I don't want to have to put on a face for different people to fit into who they want me to be. Because as God was pruning me, he was pruning my circle. I went from about 10 good friends down to three. Why do I have to be by myself? Like, I'm used to having all these friends. Like, I thrive off friendships. I'm bubbly. I'm a people person. Like, why do I have to not have friends? But he was pruning. So in this season of being pruned, I learned who my friends were. I learned who God really wanted me to be around. And like I said, I learned that I don't have to be double-minded and put on masks for people who I'm not even here to please. <laughs> like, I'm not even here to please y'all. So I don't need to put on a mask. Oh, when I go to church, I'm this holy sanctified person. But when I leave church, I still want to go out and party. Eventually, it was like my taste for those things went away. Like, it got to a point where I didn't want to drink. I didn't want to smoke. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to party. And like I said, everybody else around me attributed to me being in love and me being spitting over the kid. And I'm like, maybe that is what it is. Not realizing like, no sis, this is God. This is God. Once I got serious about God, that's when he got serious about me. It was kind of like he felt like he could trust me again. So he started giving me more of him. So that whole mindset that I had of there has to be more to God, I was starting to experience it. And it started with like dreams. Then it started with like visions and me talking to him and him talking back to me. And I'm like, like, whoa, you talking back to me. That's crazy. All of that led to me being baptized again this February. I said the first time I got baptized, I was like eight or nine years old. And I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know about repentance. I didn't know like this is a lifelong thing and that I'm making a covenant and a commitment to God to live this life that I didn't like I didn't know any of that. I was just doing it because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. So this February I got rebaptized. Hey, I got baptized by fire, water, Holy Ghost, all of that. And that's when I noticed that my life was starting to like speed up in God. Like things started to mold and go the way that I feel that he purposed for them to go. And I just want to read this quick scripture. So we all know Jeremiah 29 11, right? So it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. But we rarely read the next verse, the next two verses. And that's what stuck to me. Verse 12 says, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. That's when I found God. When I stopped seeking God from a carnal place, from like a, a surface level of platform and I really sought him with my whole heart when I submitted my life to him and said you know what I don't want to be the Tiffany that I think that I need to be I want to be the Tiffany who you've called me to be that's when Jesus ruined my life right then and there when I totally submitted my will my thoughts and my desires over to him that's when he changed me this transformation process is still happening like I'm nowhere near perfect I'm not all that I am called to be yet, but it's a work in progress. And people often think that when you're called, when you're a Christian, that you're perfect. And that's not true. Like none of us are perfect. We're striving for perfection. And if you are dealing with thinking that, oh, you have to be perfect to be a Christian. And if you make one little mistake by eating too many French fries, that you're going straight to hell. That is not true. That is demonic. Don't think like that because God tells, he tells us like, there's no condemnation. So why are we condemning ourselves over stuff that we can easily go to the Father for and he'll forgive us for? So don't do that. Don't do that. Like, I had to learn that. Like, no matter what I do, as long as I'm striving for this perfection and I'm living a life that is holy and pleasing to his eyesight, that's all that matters. I say all of this to say that Jesus really did ruin my life, giving my life to him, was me laying down 
and crucifying myself and my flesh, my wants, my thoughts, and my desires, all for him to get the glory and then for him to elevate me. So I'm very grateful for the things that he's doing. I'm very grateful for all of the things that I've been through in my life. Like this is one testimony. Like this is one testimony Tuesday video. Child, if I told you on my story, it'd be a book as thick as the encyclopedia. I'm just grateful. Like, I'm so grateful. And I've been getting a lot of people that are like, wow, you know, congratulations. Like, I'm so proud of you. And it can be you too. So the reason that the people are like, congratulations and stuff, if you don't follow me on Instagram, what you're doing? Follow me on Instagram, shameless plug at Tiffany and East. I was licensed as a minister. Child, I ain't never think I was gonna be nobody minister, okay? I'm just supposed to be little on me. I'm supposed to be a little on me that sang in the choir that can't hold a note, but I can sing in the choir. But God saw something bigger in me. He saw something better in me. And so he gets all the glory. But I just want to encourage you guys. I know it's hard. I know falling into temptation is easy. I know that it looks good. We think it's gold because it's glittery. But there is a better way. Being a Christian is not boring. Being a Christian is not a walk in the park. Being a Christian does not mean that you're perfect. You have to know that you serve a perfect God who is willing to transform you day by day as long as you are willing to submit your life totally to him and seek him earnestly with your whole heart, not just a piece of your heart, like your whole heart, your whole heart, period. Like that's how you have to seek him. I would encourage everyone, like if you don't have a church home and you need a church home, Please go find you a good church, not a dead church. Go find you a church with some life in it that's going to speak life into you, that's going to encourage you, that's going to correct you, that's going to let you know when you're wrong, that's going to help you get through your deliverance process, that's going to feed you the word, the rhema, and the logos. Get you a church home. After you get you a church home, build a relationship with Jesus. We go on dates with boys. We go on dates with our friends. But how many times do you go on dates with Jesus? There is so much to him to know, and he wants to get to know you. You. So spend some time getting to know Jesus. And third and finally, get you a strong community. I can't stress that enough. You need a community that's going to hold you accountable. When I say accountable, I don't mean a community that's going to say, well, girl, you can sleep with them this one time. <laughs> Don't get that kind of community, okay? You need to get the kind of the community where they're already praying and interceding on your behalf for what they feel like you're about to do. They can call you before you pick up his what you're doing text at 1159. Okay? Get you a community that's going to hold you accountable, that's going to pray for you, that's going to uplift you, that's going to be there for you, okay? Because we're not meant to walk this journey by ourselves. I said that was last. That ain't last. The last thing is pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Like, pray, 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 pray. A lot of people, they don't know how to pray, what to pray, what to say. You know, like I said, my grandma was a praying grandmother, so I thought I had to pray like, mm -hmm. no, you ain't gotta do all that, okay? Just like I'm talking to y'all, it's how y'all can talk to God, just you know. Father, <laughs> I need you to help me with this. You see that I'm struggling. I need you to help me, please. And he's going to be there to answer to you. So I hope this video encourages you guys. I hope this video uh, brings you into my life a little bit better. Get to know me a little bit more. I hope this testimony helps somebody. The Bible says that we overcome by our testimonies. So I hope that this encourages you guys. And until my next video, bye.